Are we live? Facebook is acting crazy today. All right, rock stars, let me know that you can hear me and see me. What's going on, rock stars? Welcome back to another episode of the 1% Life Show. I'm your host, Peak Performance Coach and Trainer, Joni Dillon, and today we are talking about, this is take two for those of you watching us live, how to invite abundance and flow by clearing the clutter in your life. Man, I don't know what time it is on your neck of the woods, but it's about 10, 11 p.m. here, super late delivering today's episode to you guys live on Facebooks. If you are listening to us live and you're still up and awake, some part of the world, whatever part of the world that you're in, drop a hashtag live. If you're catching the replay on the back end, drop a hashtag replay. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Rockstar, man, before I get into this episode, I have to tell you, as we are approaching, oh my goodness, happy Canada Day to y'all, for those of you Canadians who are watching yesterday, and the 4th of July, how crazy is it that the 4th of July is coming up this weekend? Saturday, I think? so nuts. Does it feel different to you guys? I know that it feels very different for me this year. In fact, it doesn't even really feel real, like it's the 4th of July weekend. And, um, you know, I wrote an email to my subscriber list yesterday, and it was all about, which I didn't think I was going to talk about this at all, but it was all about you know, how different it feels right now when, for me personally, when I think about my personal freedom and freedoms that I feel and really are, feel disconnected to in the world right now. And I don't know if you feel the same. I'm actually curious to know if you've looked at your freedom differently going into this 4th of July for those of you Americans listening to the podcast. Um, and, you know, in this email that I sent out, it was you know, they can take, put you into quarantine and yes, there's whatever's going on in the world is going on and, you know, full empathy for anybody, you know, including my friend who is currently in the hospital going through, um, you know, what he's going through with COVID-19 and, you know, but more than that, like, there's so many freedoms that have been taken away from us in different ways and from being forced into quarantine, I know, Certain places in California just went back to phase one. Um, they're talking about doing it here again in Washington and in Oregon. And man, from the freedom of speech being taken away from people on YouTubes and different platforms like that, it's like, can you not help but question your personal freedoms? And if that's changed for you, because I feel like it has for me, I do question it. And here's the one thing that I do know and that is this that anything they can take anything from you they can make you stay in your house they can take away you know your freedom of speech your freedom of who knows what else um, maybe even force you into gosh god forbid vaccines personally will not do it um but they can't take away this one thing and before i get into this episode i, I just want to i feel compelled right now to share this maybe that's why this live didn't work the first time was because i was meant to share this message and that is um, that they can't take away your freedom to think. And your freedom to think is the most important asset you have. And more than thinking, it's your mind, right? Your ability to control your thinking that creates the outcomes in your life. And that's one thing that nobody can take away from you. Nobody can take that away from me or anybody else. Well, at least they haven't figured out a way yet. And, and I believe that that's the most important asset that you have is your ability to think and to believe what you want to believe in regards to anything. And hopefully the thing that you want to believe is one that's supporting you and supporting you in achieving and creating the life that you truly desire and deserve. And, you know, I think that a lot of people have really forgotten how to think and they're given the thinking based on what's going on in the media and the agendas of, you know, the different publications and media, etc. and even other agendas, government, local agendas, right? Whatever those are. But people have given up their ability to think 
they're just walking around doing the thing without the free will. Sure, thinking is a free will, but are you going to think what other people are forcing you to think? The agendas and the you know, of the media is out there. Let's just make one big generalization right now. Or are you capable of thinking on your own? And this is where I really do believe, before we get into this episode on clutter and clearing the clutter in your life, that when you gain the skill to not let your thoughts control you, but for you to control your thoughts, anything is possible for you. You can actually feel good through a crisis. You can actually feel fulfilled. See, I have clients who are like, Jenny, I don't know. I kind of feel really good right now, and I almost feel guilty for feeling this way when other people are suffering and struggling, but I'm doing really well in my life. You know, many of them have started new businesses. They're flourishing. They're creating incredible income and changing lives and leading teams and just doing amazing things through what, for many people, is the most challenging time of their life. And the reality is, is that when you learn how to control your mind, your mind will not control you. And as we go into this new era, this new economy of uncertainty, of all the things that are to come, right? We're just not touching the surface of it. It's barely, it's not even showing up yet. It requires a new level of thinking and a new level of being. And that new level of thinking is going to help you break through whatever challenges you're experiencing from a day to day, whatever change gets thrown your way. See, I had clients today who were like, oh my God, I can't handle the new changes at work. It's like, I hate it. I can't handle it, right? They couldn't handle the change. And so the conversation becomes, you know, all right, so either the change is going to own you or you're going to be able to have behavioral flexibility through the change using the thinking in your mind and controlling your thoughts. And I don't know if you, if you, yeah, I'm reading the comments. It is working this time. Yeah, it's a mess again, right? Chris and Vegas and, you know, there's, there's so much change that's happening. Just when we get used to being, opening up our lives again, it's like, oh, they're shutting back down. And so how do we create the goals and the outcomes and the things that we want in our life if we're just waiting for the outside world to show up for us? And it will, more often than not, let you down. So where that comes from is your ability to create your world through your inner world, right? Your reality, your life is a product of everything that goes on inside this mind of yours. And it's a learned skill. It's a learned programming. Like you actually have to program your mind to think in the way that serves you as opposed to a way that holds you back and that really prevents you from achieving the things that you want to achieve in your life. So anyways, I believe that right now more than ever, we have to learn how to think and we have to learn how to control what's going on in our mind so that no matter what's happening out there, you can show up and do the thing. What do I mean by that? That there's nothing in your mind that's blocking you. There's nothing that says that I can't do this because of the economy around me or because we're in lockdown or this is going on and that and this is shutting down. What if there were no limits? What if there were no barriers? What if there was zero resistance and the only thing that was a barrier for you was the thoughts in your mind that stopped you from doing the thing? What if that's all it was? And what if all you had to do, Rockstar, was learn how to tap into the inner ability you have, the ability to master your mind, the thoughts that you think, and the beliefs that you have? And what if just by changing those beliefs slightly, a two millimeter shift, it had the ability to radically transform your life? So. I know I'm jumping into the topic of today, and I just wanted to invite you, if that resonates with you at all, the, you know, the, the, the fact that there is such confusion and lack of self like thinking, I don't even know what the words are right now, but people thinking on their own and not feeling like robots and wanting to learn how to program your mind to serve you as opposed to having your mind work against you, then I'd like to invite you to join us in our upcoming 10-day incredible online experience that you can work from your laptop or your cell phone from the comfort of your home, and that is the Create Your 1% Life Challenge. 
and it's an incredible ten day online experience with me coaching you through different themes every single day where we'll teach you how to leverage the power of your mind specifically your subconscious mind to work for you and to align with your conscious thoughts, your conscious desires, intentions, goals and all that you desire for yourself to really navigate these uncertain times and everything that you're experiencing so that you can create incredible outcomes in your life. So Rockstar, join us by going to the1percentlife.com and sign up for this incredible 10 day experience. It's the, the number one percentlife.com and we'll see you inside. So let's jump into this. We're talking about clutter today and I'm gonna explain to you where this conversation about clutter has arisen from. So yesterday I was tasked with clearing out a desk. Sounds simple enough, right? Can you clear out a desk, babe? Because I need this desk for a training that I'm doing from my home and the desk was not in the place that the training was going to be held. It was going to be in a different room. I was like, okay, I can do it. And I pushed it off and pushed it off and pushed it off. I was like, the desk I never use. Okay. This is a desk that's, you know, on my second floor and it's, it's kind of, I don't know if you have any of these spaces in your home where they kind of tend to accumulate things, right? So, you know, they're in nice piles, right? Like all these papers were in kind of nice piles. Nice, I say in air quotes. And they were stacked up, right? And on top, then there were these all these little bags of like receipts and things and like random stuff. I had things from Italy from two, um, a year and a half ago. I had things from trips to... Nicaragua, I had trips from all, like all kinds of souvenirs and random, let's just call it crap, okay? Things that I thought I needed to hold on to. There were papers that should have been in notebooks specifically that are training manuals. There were all kinds of things that they were nicely stacked in different piles and bags of stuff. And it was like all kind of protected. The desk had full on dust, full disclosure, dust on it because I didn't want to go near it, right? It's like, I just don't want anything to do with this desk. Why do you think that is? because there was something about that space, that energy that I had associated in my mind to rejecting that space. Yet, here's the crazy part. I literally have to walk by it every day, probably 30 times a day. And I'm seeing the space. I'm seeing this clutter. I'm seeing and feeling, literally think about this. If you're walking by a space that you have any negative energy towards, right? Maybe you have a space like that in your home. What do you think that's doing for you internally? What do you think that's making you feel? How is it making you feel? Well, for me, when I really connect with it, like right now, I literally am feeling it in my body. I'm gonna tell you what happened. And you're, it's gonna, you're gonna be like, wow, that's crazy. And I'm feeling it in my body right now because every single day for five years, I have walked by that space many times in the day. And the thoughts, whether they're conscious or not, there are thoughts that are looping in your mind, right? Like subconsciously, there's things that are like you're feeling, you're thinking, you may not even be aware of in the moment, but they're there every time you see it because your mind associates it with that visual, right? It's like, oh, there's that thing again. Oh, there's a thing I'm avoiding. Oh, there's that space that you don't want to deal with and all the things that were there around it, right? Meaning the, the stuff I needed to go through, the things I needed to handle, the throwing away of simply throwing away of stuff. And so last night I got tasked with this. I was like, oh, resisting it. I'm like, okay, I can do it. No problem. Everything's in piles. It's going to be nice and easy. I literally get up to clean the clutter. I think it took me like three or four hours <laughs> because I sifted through everything piece, one piece by one piece. And in the end, right, everything's, there was three garbage bags or um, brown bags, like paper bags from the grocery store or two of them actually. One was all the recycling and one bag was for all the garbage that I was throwing away. And so my partner, Scott, comes upstairs. I'm like, hey, babe, desk is ready. Feel free to take it. I, like I even, you know, oh, at the, that point in time, I hadn't dusted it off or cleaned it off. But I started feeling, so we're talking about this. He's like, how do you feel? And I was like, you know, I'm getting these pains in my body. And there was like stabbing pains almost in my you know, between my third chakra uh, right here and, um, and in between my second chakra, which is, you know, just kind of right behind the navel and right below my rib cage, it was like very cramping. It was like this cramping feeling, like really high. I was like, oh my God, it hurts so bad. And what was happening is it was like, I want you to think about this. What happens 
with clutter. So like, here's what clutter really is. When you have clutter, and, and you can think of clutter as literally as papers or a room that's disorganized. And I have a friend you know, whose mom's garage is, she's been hoarding stuff for 20, 30, probably 40 years, right? Imagine what is trapped in there. And I'm not talking about inside the boxes. I'm speaking of energetically, the energy that is trapped, right? Because energy needs to flow. It needs to move. It needs to flow. And when literally there's hoarding of things or the cluttering of things, energy cannot flow. It can't flow. It gets stuck. And that stuck energy impacts you. It impacts you. And I remember one time a couple years ago, where I had invited, because I had this really strange habit of not being able to get rid of papers. It's so weird. Like I think that I need this envelope or this paper that's not envelope, like literally, but there's this paper that I had written something on a note from maybe a training or something a client had told me. And I kept all of these papers. And even from back when I used to work at my old job, at Wyndham, I had so many papers. It's like, maybe someday I'm going to need this paper. Someday I'm going to need that document. I'm going to need this thing for my clients, right? How many of these papers just stack the F up, right? And it's like, and please let me know that I'm not alone. <laughs> maybe you have some of this in your life. And I'm curious to know, for those of you listening to the live or the replay, what is it that you hold on to in terms of clutter, right? Is there space in your home? And, and maybe it's just something that's not done, it feels cluttered. There's an energy of clutter to it, right? Maybe it's taxes, maybe it's, you know, accounting, maybe it's something like that as well. And so that energy, whether it's in a garage or in a bedroom or simply a desk is stuck energy. And see our unconscious minds, your subconscious mind, whatever you want to call it, it processes things in metaphors, right? And so when there's stuck energy and it feels energy, it feels energy more than you know and when there's stuck energy i see he's saying in the chat saying me when there's stuck energy with things that are cluttered in our life it impacts us in every way and i remember a couple years ago as i was telling you when i had this you know woman who came to my house and helped me go through some things for taxes like she was clearing out and helping me organize all the stuff and literally the next day like i was just resisting it and resisting it and resisting it but i finally did it i forced myself and leaned in and i did it and the next day i was just telling my partner last night i was like i remember it was so crazy because i was a place in my business i was like you know it was not a lot of sales had come in that last week or two but literally the next day i had a forty thousand dollar day day you guys like day after cleaning out the clutter a $40,000 day in just customers, sales, coaching clients. It was incredible of what can happen when you, as to what can happen when you release the clutter, the energy has the ability to flow and move. And so last night when my body was feeling all kinds of just crazy, right? What was happening is like, it was feeling it like the metaphor. I mean, think about the metaphor that exists there. Like when you clear out clutter, you're allowing things to flow in your life. And so my body unconscious and my unconscious mind was like feeling this. And it was literally moving the energy as I was moving the things in my desk and taking them and throwing them in the garbage. Right? Like all of the stuff was surfacing within me, right? It was coming out. It needed a place to flow to and move that was attached to the energy of that desk and all of the unfinished things and stuff that needed to be thrown out and the clutter and the, the meaning of all that stuff that was there, right? We give meaning to everything. So all of that needed a place to go within me. So literally my body's experiencing crazy cramping and pains. I was like, what the heck? And you know, my partner's putting his hands, he's like helping me try and he's like, you know, saying all this stuff to help move the energy. I don't know what he's saying, but whatever it was. And then literally, probably it was like 15 minutes later. Oh, no, 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 almost forgot this. So he said, I'll take the garbage, I'll take the stuff out. And I said, wait, I feel like I need to take it out and dump it myself. Because for me, there's something very symbolic about that activity. It's like, cool. He gets that, right? He's like, let's go, I'll go with you and I'll allow you to dump it. So I walked out there, we went out to the dumpsters in, in my building and 
you know, and he said, literally take the bag and I want you to turn it over and like see it like dumping out, right? And imagine what this does for your subconscious mind. Like it processes things in um, in metaphor. Like that's a, there's a huge metaphor there. Like the dumping out of stuff, like of shit, of like, you know, years of stuff. I had things from 2017, 2016 in there. It was just all kinds of crazy. And then I dumped the other thing and the other thing out. There are the two or three bags that were there. And we come back inside and probably five minutes later, he's like, how are you feeling? How are your cramps? And I was like, what cramps? Like, it's totally gone. It was completely gone. And it was literally because of me clearing out the clutter and creating room for abundance and flow to come into my life. And that energy within me that just needed to move, it just needed to get out. And man, if you if you're somebody who does the work, right? When things come up and you face it head on, you look at it, you face it, you deal it, deal with it, and you have the awareness enough to know that there's something subconscious in here. There's something that needs to be cleared. And really, there wasn't anything I felt that I needed to do other than dump the bag out, <laughs> clear the stuff from the desk, dump it out. That was it, right? And there's some a couple other things that I'm taking care of. But other than that, I was like, wow, I feel so free right now. So light and like abundant, right? And I'm just so excited to just see how this manifests in my life. Because I know that when the clutter, the energy of clutter, that is a stuck energy. And now that it's been released, it's, it's almost like the void needs to be filled. You've heard me maybe talk about the vacuum law of prosperity before. When the universe naturally wants to fill a void with good, it wants to fill it with positivity. And so now that there's like all that void of stuff, like metaphorically speaking, right? Like all the papers and all the crap's been thrown away. Imagine now what the universe is ready to provide in the form of prosperity, in the form of abundance. Abundance comes in many different forms and flow into my life. Can you imagine that? And so I want you to think about how this applies specifically to you and what you have that's un that's cluttered, that is creating a stuck energy in your life. And maybe it's just something that needs to be done something that needs to be handled, something that needs to be said, right? Everything is energy. But specifically, if you have an area of your life that you kind of resist, or an area of your house even, let's just go there, that you resist or that needs more attention, that needs handling, or specifically an area of your life, taxes, accounting, um, like the handling of organization of things, right? Something you've been really putting off. When you do it and it's uncomfortable to do and all the stuff can surface for sure, all the resistance, all the reasons why, like, oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, I had all the reasons. Imagine what you're opening up in terms of energy, flow, and abundance into your world. So Rockstar, I hope you got value from today's episode and that it's allowing you to think about where you can start moving energy to really create shifts in your life because everything is energy and we need to be aware of when we are creating stuck energy and suppressing the energy from flowing. It happens also in money, with money. When we hoard money, when we hold money, when we lock money down, we suppress its flow. And just like the example I gave you, money needs to flow. It's simply energy. So if you're hoarding money, if you're holding onto it for a rainy day, well, number one, you're going to attract that rainy day, I promise you. And number two, what would happen if you just allowed that money to flow? Start moving it into something that's doing something for you, that has a forward movement to it. Maybe it's investing into a business. Maybe it's investing into a course. Maybe it's investing into yourself. Whatever that, in some way, shape, or form, whatever that thing is, Take it from a stuck place where it's not doing anything for you and shift the mentality and the mindset behind it and begin to allow the energy of money to flow. Watch it come back to you tenfold. It's a powerful thing to observe when we stop hoarding, we stop suppressing, and we look at money in a way that it's simply the exchange of energy, right? When, when we give money, money flows back to us. When we, you know, instead of we tithe it, what inspires us, when we give to causes that fill our hearts and souls, 
the universe, God, your higher power, however you want to think of it, will give back to you. It's the flow of energy, okay? So I hope you got value from today's episode, Rockstar. If you did, please share this out. Tag somebody in the comments. Share this out to your communities. And if you're listening to this on a podcasting platform, then uh, leave us a five-star review if you got value from this today and a rating and review, however you call it. And join us in this upcoming challenge if you'd like to learn how to tap into the power of your subconscious mind and really begin to reveal all of the things that have been blocking you, that you have been resisting from stepping into your excellence and into that best version of you, that better version of you, that higher self version of you that is capable of doing anything that you truly believe in and um, can make happen because it's available for you. So Rockstar, join us. Go to the1percentlife.com. It's the, the number one, percentlife.com. We'll see you July 7th. Super excited to guide you on this incredible journey and to help you begin to transform your life from the inside out. Be unstoppable today. Peace. Bye, Rockstars.